Hi, everyone, and welcome back to JSA TV, where we are coming to you today live from the floor of Data Cloud Global Congress 2025 in beautiful Cannes, France. I'm Barb Mitchell, and I am pleased to be joined by Scott Armel, who's the Executive Vice President of Global Portfolio and Business Units at Vertiv. Appreciate Thanks for you. joining us. Thanks yeah. for having me. How's the show going so far? We're sort of we we're saying it's sort of day one, sort of day two. Quite a, a buzz here yeah. and, and an incredible amount of energy. It's been really fun and exciting to kind of see everybody coalesce and come together. Yeah, a, an amazing show. It grows every year, I think. And we were talking, you have a, a, a large contingent from Vertiv out at, at the event this year. Very large contingent from Vertiv, both here officially and unofficially, kind of in the area. So yeah, yeah. huge amount of support, a lot of opportunity to have very interesting, groundbreaking customer conversations here amazing. as well. So very yeah. exciting. I, and, Obviously, one of the big conversations that's happening, not just at this show, but it feels like every day, everywhere you listen is around AI. And, you know, our when we think about it at the context of this show and, and the companies here, including Vertiv, it's it's really how AI is pushing demands on infrastructure and, and uh, scaling growth demands. And so can you talk a little bit about how Vertiv is evolving your portfolio to, to meet these demands. Yeah, absolutely. AI is really kind of the engine and the change agent here, um, which has been a really interesting development for the industry in general. Um, huge onset of the need for liquid cooling, a uh, huge change to just rack densities and densification of the data center and how we build data centers as a result of it, which is really exciting for us. In an industry that has been kind of steady and progressive for a long time, this has been a pretty big and significant inflection point. Um, Vert is doing a lot. Um, obviously, we've we've gone very heavily into full capability around liquid cooling portfolios. So, full complement of CDU development. Um, we've kind of pioneered a new category. Um, we're calling trim coolers in terms of uh, how we do heat rejection, how we do heat reuse at a facility level, and then a really uh, a lot of I would say portfolio development around power infrastructure and the services that go with it. So, combining low voltage switch gear, UPS, energy storage into more comprehensive solutions that can kind of lean forward and lean into the densification roadmap we're seeing from AI has been really where uh, we have earned if we're kind of pouring our development efforts. One of the other areas I think we wanted to chat about a little bit is, I mean, there's there's challenges across the board, right? But you start to think about new and emerging markets and the unique uh, challenges that may exist there. And, and I was wondering if you could share some insights on, yeah, on that. We've uh, Obviously, the U.S. gets a ton of attention around AI, and I think rightfully so. A huge, vast majority of the, the major development is happening there. But with some of inference and coming to enterprise, uh, kind of the onset of sovereign AI and some of these concepts, like we're seeing a lot of interesting deployments in new and unique areas in a lot of emerging markets. Um, typically, you're not going to have the same level of space infrastructure, power availability, um, even trained people or trained skill um, in mass at the scale at which we need to build for, for AI and training type of data centers. That really plays into what we think is a sweet spot around solutions, our service um, portfolio, our service uh, kind of footprint of skilled tech and installers. Um, that really allows us to do, uh, take on more of development efforts and take on more of kind of factory level install of, of equipment, infrastructure, uh, put it together in one place, deploy it to a site that allows us to maybe overcome some of the challenges we have with skilled labor, training, um, on-site man hours and things like that, that can be more challenging in an area that isn't used to development at this scale. Let's talk about that a little bit more. I mean, this is something that's, that's again, we're talking about some pressure points across the industry. One of them has to be who is going to do all of this work, right? And, and where is the, the workforce? You mentioned at Vertiv, obviously you have a large team already, you have a skilled uh, workforce in your organization, but but how are you looking to expand that to meet the, the demands yeah. that you're feeling? It, it, good question. And there's a couple of different angles for us. You, I mentioned my, my service team and our install base. We have over 4,000 trained customer engineers and service technicians globally. Um, which we believe is, is industry leading, but what skill sets we have today aren't necessarily the skill sets that are going to be needed to help us kind of develop AI-based data centers globally and in all locations that are needed. We've done a tremendous amount of, I'll say, skill set adjustment, portfolio adjustment, and training to make sure that as kind of liquid cooling becomes more predominant and more ubiquitous uh, across data center infrastructure, we have the right people in the right places trained in volume and in mass to be able to support customers in what they need to do. 
The other angle for us, uh, I mentioned earlier, is our solutions portfolio. So prefabricated, modular solutions, hybrid types of data centers, as much content as we can take off of the site and bring back to a more controlled factory environment where we're putting together power modules, cooling skids, other infrastructure that is bundled, tested, prefabricated in more of a controlled environment and then deployed to a site, um, helps both reduce man hours on site, it helps improve quality and safety um, for some of these more complex construction jobs and really helps us kind of deliver a more turnkey aligned and integrated solution for our customers, which I think helps across the board and turns into a win-win for everyone. Yeah. Amazing. Any final words as you, I mean, we've stolen you away here just for a few minutes. What are you looking forward to for the remainder of the week? No, it's, it's fun to talk about uh, just in the context of there's so much new and different happening in the data center space. There's so much yeah. attention both from within the industry and from outside the industry yeah. in terms of how AI is shaping not only kind of the, the data center and, and computer world, but broadly changing society. And yes, yeah. kind of being at the forefront of that and being a critical enabler from a foundational and infrastructure perspective is a very cool position to be in. Yeah. Um, I'm really excited by kind of the energy and, and just the, the general buzz we have at a show like this and across the ecosystem we have of both customers and partners um, to really kind of challenge system norms and really change the way in which we do business um, as a data center ecosystem. Um, it's just really cool to kind of look out some years and see where this is going and, and be a critical part of enabling that. I absolutely agree. It's the it's the place to be, right? Exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it. I know absolutely. it's so busy. Appreciate you you stealing away a few minutes to, to chat with us. Certainly. It's so my thank pleasure. Thank you. And thank you to our viewers for tuning in to JSA TV, where we continue to come to you today live from the floor of Data Cloud Global Congress. Stay tuned until next time.